Well, it came as no big shock to most people this morning when the Federal Reserve announced that they're going to be keeping their key interest rate set between 5.25 and 5.5%. But it did indicate that a rate cut could happen as soon as September. And the decision this morning, it comes as economic indicators are showing continued expansion. Although job gains uh, have slowed and inflation does still remain slightly elevated. They noted that job gains have moderated and that the unemployment rate has moved up, but still remains low. They also acknowledged that inflation has eased over the past year but remains somewhat elevated. So the Fed, of course, they're focused on achieving that maximum employment at, while maintaining inflation at around 2% in the long run. That's their long-term target. Uh, their statement this morning, it emphasized that it will be closely monitoring economic data and risks to both sides of that dual mandate that they have. The committee stated that it does not expect it will be appropriate to reduce the target rate until it has gained greater confidence that inflation is moving sustainably towards 2%. It also mentioned it will continue reducing its holdings in Treasury Securities Agency debt uh, to support its objective. The committee did highlight its uh, commitment to adjusting monetary policy as needed based on labor market conditions, inflation pressures, and other financial developments. The key to today's announcement is that while they did not cut rates this month, it is uh, they, they've left themselves open to the possibility of a rate reduction in September. There have been all kinds of talks recently about how shutting down short-term rentals like Airbnbs, for example, will help alleviate the housing crisis that we're seeing here in Canada. However, a recent Statistics Canada study shows that less than 1% of the country's housing stock actually comprises of short-term rentals, such as Airbnb, Verbo, which could potentially be converted into long-term rentals or even permanent housing. This finding highlights that short-term rentals have a negligible effect on the broader housing market, especially, they say, in cities with low rental vacancy rates like Toronto, Vancouver, and they note Halifax as well. The study indicates that only 0.69% of Canada's housing stock in 2023 was actually made up of these short-term rentals that could be transitioned into long-term housing. Now, Alan Ab Learworth, I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly, he's the Deputy uh, Chief Economist with the Canada Mortgage and Housing Corporation. He commented on the findings and he says, the data suggests that STRs are not a pivotal factor on the long-term rental market. He also noted I don't think it follows immediately that stopping a unit from being an STR will mean it's immediately transferred into being a long-term rental. This study it utilized data from the Census, from Stats Canada, and from AirDNA, which is a real estate research firm that tracks STR listings. It did exclude typical vacation properties such as cottages, and it focused on STRs where the entire unit was listed for rent for most of the year. Interestingly here, in cities like Toronto and Vancouver, the percentages of STRs that could be turned into long-term rentals were relatively small, 0.36% in Toronto and 0.45% in Vancouver. Now, both of these cities have policies to limit the conversion of potential long-term rentals into STRs. Sarah Hicks, she's the Chief License Inspector for the City of Vancouver. She says, when properties intended for long-term rentals are taken off the market, the overall housing supply decreases, making it harder for residents to find housing. Now, in pretty sharp contrast to these big cities, uh, tourist-heavy areas showed higher percentages of STRs that could potentially uh, become long-term housing. The numbers there in Whistler, British Columbia, 35% of the homes were identified, and Mont-Tremblant, Quebec, at 16.4%. Looking for a smart way to invest your money? Well, don't miss the opportunity to potentially take your portfolio to the next level. BMO ETFs and mutual funds, they offer you a range of solutions to potentially take your portfolio to that next level. Whether you want to diversify your portfolio or access new markets, BMO GAM has something for you. BMO GAM's financial professionals are always on the lookout for the best opportunities and strategies to help you achieve your goals so you can invest with confidence. Don't miss the chance to join thousands of Canadians who trust BMO GAM with their money. Visit bmogam.com, that's b-m-o-g-a-m.com today to find out more. Now briefly, I wanna say a quick thank you to today's sponsor, Fawcett Mattress. As some of you guys may know, unfortunately my daughter has eczema. It is so frustrating and annoying trying to figure out what it is that's flaring up her skin. Well, recently we made the call to try switching up our mattress and we opted for a mattress free of harsh chemicals crafted on Vancouver Island, made from natural materials like talalay latex and organic cotton. This mattress of course offers superb comfort and durability. You even get to pick and personalize your preferred firmness 
I opted for the firm slash extra firm option. That's just the way that we like it. I've said it before, but investing in your health to me is just a no brainer, especially considering how much of our lives we spend sleeping. If you're like me and want to support a local homegrown company, you can use the code Beavis10 for 10% off the entire site. This is a site-wide 10% discount. Enjoy free shipping across Canada and a decade of guaranteed support. There'll be a link down below to check it out, but make the switch to a healthier sleep today with Fawcett. Thank you for sponsoring the video. TC Energy has announced that they plan to sell a minority stake in its Nova Gas Transmission and Foothills Natural Gas Pipeline System for $1 billion to a consortium of 72 Indigenous communities. And this move is part of the company's overall strategy to reduce debt and to fund new investments. According to TC Energy, the deal will mark Canada's largest equity interest purchase agreement with an Indigenous-owned investment partnership. The natural gas infrastructure included in this deal spans a 25,000 kilometers of pipeline systems across Western Canada, and it connects about 80% of natural gas production from the Western Canadian sedimentary basin to domestic and export markets. Now, the communities will acquire a 5.34% interest with the deal expected to close in the third quarter of 2024. The Alberta Indigenous Opportunities Corp, AIOC, they will back the participating communities with a $1 billion equity loan guarantee to support the investment. Blood Tribe Chief Roy Fox, he acknowledged the challenges that they will be facing during the negotiations. And he says, yes, they had arguments. Yes, I had arguments with some of them, but that's part of what it is that we do in ensuring that a very beneficial outcome happens when you have trust determination and the sincerity to make a go of it. This deal now, it is subject to each of the 72 communities uh, deciding independently on, on whether they're gonna participate or not, uh, but the deal itself will proceed regardless of the individual decisions. It is consistent, this deal is consistent with TC Energy's broader goal of selling $3 billion worth of assets in 2024 to alleviate the debt pressures that I sort of alluded to earlier. Um, earlier in June, so last month, the TC Energy shareholders voted to spin off the company's liquid uh, pipeline business into a new entity that will be called South Bow Corp. Now, so far, industry experts view the development positively. For example, Robert Kwan of RBC Dominion Securities, he described it as a favorable step towards achieving TC Energy's asset sale for 2024. He said, we positively view the company partnering with Indigenous communities, though he did temper his enthusiasm by noting that the sale involves only a 5.34% stake. For the first time in three years, condo rents in the Greater Toronto and Hamilton areas have seen a slight decrease. Uh, this is from a report by Urban Nation, which reveals that the average condo rents on new leases were down 1.2% in the second quarter compared with the same period last year. This then translates to an average rent of $3.97 per square foot or $2,723 for a 686 square foot apartment. That's down from $4.02 per square foot last year. Urban Nation President Sean Hildebrand, he says that the rent decrease is primarily due to a surge in uh, condo completions. Uh, that being said, he did note that the trend might be short-lived as the new condo sales that we're seeing in the area um, have dropped significantly. He says the slight pullback in rents is mainly due to a spike in condo completions. Now, in contrast to this, rents for purpose-built rental apartments that have been completed since the year 2000, those rents increased by 2.2% from last year, now averaging $4.08 per square foot. Toronto rents within this category, they dipped 0.5%, uh, but the broader region saw a rise, a pretty significant rise of 7.7%. And this growth in rent uh, for newer rental apartments, it sort of highlights this divergence um, that we're seeing in the rental market dynamics within the region. Uh, the report also indicates that uh, purpose-built rental apartment vacancies have been increasing. They have gone uh, from 1.6% in the second quarter of 2022 to 2.7% last quarter. And this rise in vacancies, it coincides with a 43% increase in rental apartment construction starts compared with last year, which strongly suggests here that there is a growing supply in the rental market. I'm here pretty typically on Mondays and Wednesdays with this report to try and help keep you updated. As always, thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next video.